So, I need to mention these things, and I know to some people it might seem ridiculous, but i got to mention it because it's worth noting or knowing, and a lot of these type of things people don't really want to talk about or mention. So, like for example, I'll tell you about, I'll tell you why this is relevant in a second, but for example, right, so... The other, I have been working on a map because I've been doing the other petition to protect the area, right? And for my research, I have this other map, which is called the Alancia map, which is like Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson map, right? From the fighting fantasy books. And it's it's called Alancia, the map, right? So you spell it A-L-L-A-N-S. Ie Alancia, right? Now, when I actually, I actually, this map, there are no complete versions of it because it's printed in a book over two pages and nobody on the internet, when you search, has bothered to put it together properly. So all of the scans of it or copies of it are, I've got a little bit of a gap in between. So I actually bought a spare copy of the book out of the pit book um, because I've got my own copy but I wanted to keep that in good condition so I bought an uh, an old copy of it and I actually removed the pages very carefully and scanned them and then on the computer I fastened them together so made the complete picture right now at this time over this over the period when that happened right When I went to the garage, right, which I go across to the garage, right, it's only over the road. So I'm going along the pavement and there's a little silver Allen key, right, that someone has thrown and it's on the road up against the pavement, right? So I notice it. I didn't pick it up. So like, oh, there's a little silver Allen key there. That's weird, right? while I'm working on this Alancia map. So someone had thrown it there. I, I'm not exactly going to pick it up and fingerprint it, right? And even if I could fingerprint it, you know, anyone could have put it there. I'm not saying who or why, because that is, you know, beyond the context of... I don't need to find out who put it there or why, but I will notice that there is an Allen key there, right, and just get on with my own business. Now... I saw it for like two days in a row. And this is exactly when I finished that map off, that Alancia map, and complete it and fasten both the pages together and make it into like one seamless photo, right? Then, on the third day, I go into the garage again, I'm speaking to the guy who owns it, the manager, right? And he says to me, unless it was him who threw the Allen key out and he's having a joke with me, right? He says to me, Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, right? But this is what the manager said of the garage. He said, you'll never guess who's been in here. And I'll say, I don't know, you tell me. He said, Sir Alan Sugar, right? He said, Sir Alan Sugar's been in. And I said, wow. He said, yeah. I said, did you, like, you know, how did you know that? I said, well, his license plate on his car. And once I saw his license plate, I recognised him. It definitely was him, right? So... At that on that day, the little silver Allen key was not outside against the pavement. It had disappeared, and I didn't pick it up. So, I mean, this is pure meaning if you want to explore and notice coincidences in meaning, right? Because if 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 it doesn't mean anything, it's not. It doesn't exist, right? It only exists if you notice that. You're working on a map that says it's called Alan Seer, with the word Alan at the start of it, and then you notice a silver Alan key on the floor, and keys are for opening and shutting things, opening and closing doors, and the name Sir Alan Sugar is his name is Alan, and he works in business and opens and shuts doors in businesses, right? So apart from you know, the ideological acknowledgement 
that oh there is a a, a, a a word play meaning if you want to go into the realms of thought otherwise there's no connection whatsoever other than there's three things that all have Alan in them right and he's a businessman and deals in business now Let's get back to Huddersfield and what's been going on in and around Huddersfield, right? Because this is meant to be a petition, funnily enough, it's meant to be a petition about a building, right? Uh, I've got lots of petitions going on about buildings at the moment because a lot of them have been changed, damaged, ruined. Um, we've had planning um, application, cheating going on at Castle Hill with Tandy and other places at Savile Estate, um, multiple ones. You know, there, I can guarantee you that the council complaints um, draw is full of complaints from other people, not just me. You know, That's why they've got a complaints department. But particularly, I am working on the ancient sites issue in Huddersfield because I've got a case for it being attacked. I think it's been spoiled. And now we've currently got issues with the Earl of Dartmouth, who is trying to build houses. And there are all kinds of my raid of things going on with that in relation to the Denby Darts buses and Transdev and, you know, Imperial Chemical Industries. Like, you have to go into that other petition that I'm doing and read all the massive pile of evidence and material that I've got for that, which is another matter, right? But let's just go now to this story that I've got on here. Why have I queued this story up to discuss and what has that got to do with anything? Well, before all these petitions that I'm doing about buildings and building and houses, what started me into petitioning is the roads and road signage, right? Because I ended up... Um, looking into and investigating the road signage around the whole of England because I'd heard about it on the radio on BBC Jeremy Vine in connection with Nick Freeman a few years quite a few years ago and I knew about it but I'd never needed to look into it and then it got to a stage where um because of my driving job I had to look into it right and I I discovered that there was it had, a lot of road signage around the whole of England had been put out unlawfully because I bought all the manuals and books and got really interested in it and literally studied it. And I wasn't wrong because I went to multiple councils and put complaints in and I made them put a lot of it correct and they went out and put it right again. So I can't possibly have been wrong about it. I was right about it. But... All I did is get it corrected on certain sites. And I got a few people in professional highways departments to admit that it could have been done on purpose. And some of them said they believed me that it had been done on purpose wrong. It wasn't just an accident. Now, this is the, this is the thing. In, the, in all of the instances, the, the respective councils, depending on which county it was in, said that, OK, they put their hands up and said it's wrong. But they claimed that it was just, an accident or a mistake. They didn't admit that someone planned it and did it on purpose because then it would have been planning corruption and criminal, right? Although I did get someone in North, uh, in, in, um, was it Yarm or North Allerton or somewhere at the highways department, whichever place it is for North Yorkshire. I got at a meeting with someone there. I turned up. Didn't need an access card to get in. I was chipping my thumb. I went and knocked on the door and asked them if I could have a speech to them in the meeting room. Um, they're trying to put a stop to things like that happening now. And um, I put my theory on the table for like the Osset Bypass, for example, and then yeah, they agreed with me. They thought I was right. And I'd been done on purpose to mislead people, drivers. So I got a very serious petition with a lot of evidence from all around the whole of England and it, it, it's quite serious because it, it incriminates multiple councils around the country and even the police being involved. So on the serious level of 1 to 10, it was like about 100, right? On the serious level of 1 to 10, it was 100. 
right? It wasn't even a little bit serious. It was extremely serious beyond comprehension, right? We're talking about national planning corruption. And you can get arrested for that because um, the mayor of Liverpool, Joe Anderson, did get arrested for planning corruption. So there is such a thing, believe it or not, and the mayor got arrested for it. Now, once I'd started getting into this investigation and started to do my own website and that, lots of mysterious things were happening. Clearly, when you do something, this is why a lot of people don't want to uh, get involved with anything like that, and it's off-putting. They just want to uh, carry on with a normal, happy, simple life, doing simple things. You don't want to uh, bother, be bothered with things like that. I was bothered about it because the entire country literally was at stake of being corrupt, and um, I don't like this country being corrupt, and I wasn't going to stand for it. So, now... This is when weird things are happening because actually it might have, actually it could have I also forgot to mention that I had done a competition in America, a photography competition in America, um that had about four hundred people in it and I did really good in it, right? Um and, and it, it actually ended up being promoted on the internet on really well connected websites, so it, it was a lot of people knew about it. So that I'd done that, right? But I hadn't made no big fuss about it, right? That was like before then. So now this is where we sort of get a little bit personal and I don't, you know, usually people don't want to talk about it. So I don't want to say too much about it, but I'll say enough of what needs to be said so you can understand um, if you agree with me, if there's a connection or not. Because if, if you, like, I'll, I'll put it on the table and then if you think that it's a lot of rubbish, then that's up to you to think, right? So on weekends, right, when I'd stay in on a weekend late, I would watch some videos and there might have been adult videos, right? And on one of these particular videos... It featured a kitchen, right? But it was only a very, 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 very extremely modest kitchen. In fact, you might even say that it's, it was only a small kitchen fit for a small apartment, but it was a really, really good video, and it was one of my favourite videos, right? So that's something to know and mention, right? And then another thing is I was watching videos, and there was a video with an actress in it, an adult video, called Corey Lane. Right, and a name Lane suggests roads or streets. Right now, she looks like I'm not a fan of Kylie Minogue or any pop stars, but it just happened to be that she really looked like Kylie Minogue. Right, this Corey Lane, you can type it in and have a look. Right, depending on which pictures you see of her, but she does look a lot like Kylie Minogue. Right now. This is the thing. Now, when I... So I, I'd be watching that video a lot, and it was one of the videos that I liked. Now, when I get into all this illegal road signage stuff and all that bit, right, we start getting weird things happening because you, you're you getting into very, very serious subject, not joke subject. It's a really, really serious subject. Subjects that involve police chiefs in charge of entire police forces in counties wearing hats and, um, you know, shirts and collars with arrows on them and, you know, even higher-up people, inspectors, and then you're even right into, you know, the army and people like that. You've, in fact, got a right, in effect, the right to petition where it's so serious and important that when you are doing this thing, petitioning... It's got a special law in place because it's very serious and important that protects you from suffering legal actions against you or injuries in order to properly fulfil it and pursue it. That's how serious it is. Nothing else in the existence of the whole entire planet has got a special law in effect where you can't be prosecuted for doing it. Only this thing. Because it's serious. It's about... Governments and countries 
and people in charge of governments and countries. That's why it's important. That's why you can't be prosecuted for it. Now, this law is not a figment of the imagination. It actually exists. And in fact, more recently, people have been using it like it's since rebellion and they're having arguments over the law. That's why the government are trying to reenact different um, clauses in the law or try and change and govern it. When I was doing it, mainly, um, all this hadn't quite started happening yet, right? Now, I believe because of my very serious investigation work that obviously I'm attracting a lot of attention from high up, right? And there were some odd things happening, weird, strange events when I'm out about at work and around at home. And this is when all the things that I had photographs of on my phone in our local area mysteriously started to change. Either the owners, for some reason, it popped into the heads or somebody popped into the heads that they'd go build a wall somewhere or knock something down or change something. And it was actually upsetting, right? Or someone would completely sell something. Like, you know, like the John Cotton, uh, John Cotton's buys Yorkshire Water, Yorkshire Water site and knocks down the entire protected trees area coming into Murfield. Or a pub that you like, the front of that you've got a photo of on your phone that you really like, the landlord just, for some unusual reason, for whatever reason it pops into his head or somebody suggests it to him, um, he goes and, or the brewery sends some letter here or there, or God knows what, he goes and completely rips out the thing that you like and put a wall up. But it wasn't just that, it was some other things. Now, another thing that happened is that when... I used to go to a, sh a lottery shop and get scratch cards, and that's the shop that I got a £200 one for the Christmas calendar, right? And it just happened to be on one occasion, not long after or before, or very much around the time I found that card, which was quite hard to find. We're talking about th the odds are like thousands to one, you know, like, you know, two or three thousand to one odds. And that's when Prince, just as at the end of the very end of the road, Prince Andrew comes past with his um, police escort, comes straight past, right? Um, past all the traffic and straight through the traffic lights with with a panache um, that he didn't have to obey any law, straight past with the police, right? Now, this is when um, Sir Patrick Stewart, who is the advocate for the university, um, steps down and in his place is replaced by the Prince Andrew, right? Funnily enough. So the Prince Andrew suddenly pops his head up in Huddersfield as an advocate of the university and starts swanning around with panache, right? Now, this is around the time when I'm still watching, sometimes on a weekend, I might watch that video that I really liked with the actress who happens to look a little bit like Kylie Minogue, right? And I'm doing all this very, very serious, important work. Now, what happens is, this is the story that popped up around then. Kylie Minogue is rumoured to be dating Prince Andrew, right? So, the pre this is on the news. It's in front of us now. We're reading it. It's on a actual website, in an actual news story, right? It's, it's an Australian um, one, I think. And it's showing us here... Prince Andrew is dating Kylie Minogue, right? So if there ever was a pinache move to show off or act flamboyantly, right, um, or try to, to someone who might be doing something that is annoying you or if you wanted to com competition someone or compete with them, um, who happened to be sniffing around the um, speed cameras, which all have, you know, the crown on them and, and all this important stuff, right, symbols, you know, Camilla, speed cameras, the crown, crown fabrications in Portishead and all this, right, then, you know, you you could... If it if 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 it was you know if these speed cameras happened to do have something high up of police chief officers and inspectors and higher 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 higher, right? If it has something to do with the royal family, you know, seeing that it has got the crown stamped on all the speed cameras, right, and the you know road signage 
simple thing. If you wanted to make a panache statement and show off, right, then you would do something like date Kylie Minogue, make sure it was in all the newspapers and make sure someone found out about it who, you know, was their favourite video that they were watching on the weekend, happened to be someone called Corey Lane who looked like Kylie Minogue, right? Now, following that, actually not too much long after that, although we're talking, this is spread out over a few years, but all, that, all this bit happened kind of together. This is when then Prince Andrew gets pulled over by the Americans for all the um, ad um, adultery or whatever it is, you know, the, with that girl, when he's touching that girl up and then he gets kicked out of the university. Prince Andrew gets booted out of the university advocacy because he's accused of all these sex offences and stuff like that, right? And he's now, you know, since then been shamed. Now, like I said earlier on, the other video, one of the other videos that was on, on my list of ones that I liked happened to be one that features this kitchen. And I don't need to tell you what it is because that's, you know, it's too much information. I'll only tell you information that is relevant, right? But I liked this video a lot. It's not a big deal video and it's not even that um, graphic, really. In fact, it's, it's not even graphic at all whatsoever, but it features an extremely modest um, apartment size or a flat size kitchen, and it's not even you know it, it's it's you know on on it, you know on a, on modest of one to ten, it is not even four. You know, it's it, it, it's not it wasn't a mess or anything, but it was you know extremely small, right? So, we've got that. Now, if you want to say, well, you know, you've been watching, you know, you've been doing all this serious investigations and getting evidence, and then you've been watching this video supposedly meant to be in private, but it's got this character who looks a bit like Kylie Minogue on, called Corey Lane, and then the next thing, Prince Andrew's flamboyantly swinging around, actually with Kylie Minogue, like showing off, and then driving past the end of the road, right? perfectly timed when you pulled up at the shop you're going to, how did you know you were going to be there and drive past the end? Well, how did you know, um, how did you know Courtney Love were going to be in when he went around to Earl? He went around and gave Courtney Love a surprise visit. How did you know you were going to be there then, right? So, we've got this kitchen theme and the, people seem to start talking about this on the radio, but one thing that happened that we'll, what I'll note is at Bradley Traffic Lights, right, there was a carpet shop and it shut down and got bought out and it got made up into this very flamboyant German kitchen shop, right, at the traffic lights. And it was actually just around the pub where the Royal and Ancient pub is. There's a pub around the corner called Royal and Ancient where Mamas and Papas is, right, as well. There's, that, there's the White Cross as well. So there was this big German kitchen place that is selling people actually flamboyant kitchens, very expensive kitchens, big kitchens. So I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I didn't think out of it at the time, right? But as well as that place changing to the kitchen place, and then as well as um, there's a place called Steads at Upper Upton, and then... The mysterious there was a, a barn that I really liked there, and it, it it got they pulled it down, and it's going to be listed, and then they did up the farmhouse and pulled the barn. And I was really upset about that because that barn was one of one of the main nice scenic buildings that you saw that always reminded you that you got home when you got off the motorway, come back through West Britain, got to Grange Moor, and then you came from Grange Moor along the ridge past the Air and Hounds, when you can see all Castle Hill and West Yorkshire, and you're like, I'm back in my home valley, my home vale, my home shire. It's literally like a lot of the rings when you, when, when Gandalf comes back to the shire, when you're back in the shire, you used to come past that little um, old barn on the right-hand side opposite Air and Hounds and the old farmhouse. And then that, that was something that you knew you were back in the, you were back in West Yorkshire, 
right? Because kind of when you get off at West Britain, you sort of back home, but it's a little bit more Wakefield. It's not really Huddersfield. It's more Barnsley Wakefield. When you get off at the junction of 38, it's like more Barnsley Wakefield, right? But when you come, um, when you when you when you come from Grange Moor, because because I live because I'm really from Murfield, not Huddersfield. When you go on that road past the Air and Hounds, and you 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 see all of the the Shire, so it's like I'm I'm home, I'm back home, and that barn opposite was was a very very um, sentimental and um, cherished visual and physical marker for coming back into the Vale, into the Shire, if you are someone who used to drive around a lot and leave the county and then come back often. Obviously, there are different ways you can leave. You can go to Manchester, which is a different way, but if you're coming back in from that side, it was important, and and it got knocked down and demolished, right? And it's actually only just up the road from where that massive gargoyle mansion is mysteriously that, that supposedly is linked to football managers or whatever. And just where the um, blacksmith arms, uh, sorry, the Freemasons arms got sold and turned into flats. But then they put big gates on the entrance so you can't pull up there. And even the people who bought the flats couldn't see out a castle properly because they didn't put any big windows on that side, only small windows. And that's a main view of Castle Hill from the old Freemasons' arms that used to have a, a big, long conservatory there because I used to go there when I was younger, when we were like 16, 17, 18, right? When, around the time we were learning to drive because we used to get lifts up there as well. Um, so, And that was a major place that people could sit and look out at Castle Hill from its majestic view. That got shut down as well, right? Now, when... So... There were those buildings, and then that's around the time that Overfort Roads at Savile Estate at Farnell, that very old, um, really, really old building with, with a nice old barn bit got pulled down, and that was a definitely a breach of planning. The council admitted that was a breach of planning, and again, that, that happened to be an Asian gentleman, um, very similar circumstances to Castle Hill. You know, they said they were going to do something, and they did something else totally different, so, you know, there was that. Now, in um, Huddersfield, at Lepton, right, there is um, an industrial estate, and next to it, there was another place that I had photos of, right, which was called Braithwaite's Electricians, and it was a... I've made another video about it earlier today, which I've uploaded, and I've talked about it in more detail. That place is is a it's it's a period design building it's like a 60s 70s style building it's nothing flamboyant or flashy but it was a very nice building and it had very vintage style letters on the outside and on the video that i made earlier today i've indicated and pointed out that the lettering on it was invocative of the little bike shop in honley there's a little cycling shop just out of Honley Village that he has, it's attached to a house, but it's a little small cycling shop and he has got some new tiles on the floor there, but the sign of it and the shop front of it, it is of a vintage period style because a lot of things in Honley are preserved. Um, you know, they've got old wooden benches that have been kept original and things like that in Honley. They seem to be gone out of the way to it. But over here, um, at the other side of Huddersfield, thing near where we are to the ancient sites, things seem to be disappearing and getting pulled down or blocked off, right? Now, this that Braithwaite's place that had a period frontage to it, Right, it, it, it was an electrician. It wasn't an electrician shop like you know, like a store, but it was his offices. And obviously, you could, you could go in there, obviously, and um, you know, ask him to do a job for you or whatever. But it, it was where he worked from, right? It was his work, his electrician's workshop, so to say, right? Now that when this around the time, not long after the Bradley traffic lights German kitchen place. Um, suddenly mysteriously got money poured into it or got sold or whatever, then this Braithwaite's place 
vanished. No sniff of a planning notice. No sniff of a planning application outside it. No prior warning. It was just poof, gone. Disappeared and in its place, boom, appeared this massive stone, huge flamboyant um, kitchen place, right? Which I don't know why there's a demand for a kitchen place when they've just put a brand new massive one down at Bradley Traffic Lights because it ain't even that far from there, right? There's two. Poof, just appeared from nowhere. So suddenly there's a big um, call for kitchens, spending loads of money on kitchens, right? So, and not only the one at Bradley Traffic Lights was a kitchen place, it was German kitchens, right? So, you know, I seem to get this, um, you know, um, it just, it, I just got this gut feeling, you know, there was some connection because you start when you start thinking German, German accent, German language, you start thinking of Queenie because Queenie is like, you know, Frankenfurter, it, it, it's what the legacy is, isn't it? It's, you know, Saxons and um, Saxons and Danes. It's, it's all Frankenfurter. So I'm thinking German kitchens. It, it, and then with the Prince Andrew thing, with the show-off, with the Kylie, it was just very strange, right? Because I'm doing this really serious, important thing, and clearly, you know... It, the authorities aren't happy about it and in fact try to ignore it and I even got done for it unlawfully when I'm supposed to be protected when I was trying to warn other people about it and inf and get su public support and then I'm getting these strange events and then you got Prince Andrews showing off through the newspapers with his pinache kind of in a um, flamboyant show-off manner um, sort of like feeling like he's trying to outcompete you with um you know the Kylie girlfriend with the actual real Kylie when you've been watching videos of someone who looks like it. Now I didn't actually give a monkey's chuff about Andrew. I just thought it was stupid and ridiculous. But this is before right we knew about or people on the internet were making these videos about the Black Rock and Vanguard group of companies and how they're all knitted together, how Black and Vanguard operate, and how it when you trace the money, follow the money and the authority within those groups, it leads up to the aristocracy and members of the royal family. And then the rest of it is 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 very it's hidden and sort of um elusive. We we can't find out 100% exactly who the one sole figure in charge of it is, if any, but, but there are lots of members of the aristocracy involved in it, like the co-op group who also do funerals, which is very convenient if you are dealing in, you know, um, deaths to do with accidents and incidents on roads because then if, it's, or if the new co-op group who are taking over all the funerals um, a lot of funeral, private funeral places closed down and the co-op group started having like a, a national funeral place. There was It's kind of like the B&Q of funerals. Let the co-op deal with it. Everything's dealt with one company that will deal with the bodies. You know, it's like what goes on in the coroners and what goes on in the coroners stays in the coroners. What happened when the ambulance turned up, you know? What, hap what happened when the ambulance turned up stays with the ambulance and the police, you know, it's their business and the co-op group now, it's the the organisation. So when we're getting into incidents and accidents and witnesses and all this, it's all falling in one big, strange corporate umbrella, right? And this is what BlackRock and Vanguard are finding out. Uh, so this is what the anonymous group now are looking into BlackRock and Vanguard and all these groups and figures and people, right? So we've got all that. So, you know, all these buildings start to get disappear. And then also, even earlier on, when, when I've been doing that photo competition in America, right, there were some photos that I had just around here locally, like a really nice wooden bench I liked at the top of the road. Um, and I got a really good photograph on there. And then it, it, it vanished. 
This was kind of before all this started happening, and they put this really horrible metal one there. Yet in places like Honley, they've got all these vintage benches, you know, and the councillors over there seem to care about preserving them, right? But all these things that are precious... Not, you know, I don't want to be Gollum here. I'm not holding on to a ring, you know, shouting precious, 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 precious. But I liked that. I liked it. I liked that bench up there. And it went. I like that Braithwaite's. It went. You know? And I like that place opposite there in Hounds. And then it went. You know, I like the Freemason's Arms. And I liked that little bit of land in Murfield. And then it disappeared. It was almost as if someone was following me around and um, making a list of things that I like and then sending someone to go and trash them, right? While at the same time getting a list of things that I liked and then, you know, getting himself a girlfriend who looks like her to show off. It was strange, right? Now, I think at this stage now we've got to, after the Americans pulled Andrew for all that, um, stuff that was in the newspapers, then Andrew's actually gone and um, got pulled, right? Pulled in by Americans in court, right? Now, I think that now with even more evidence that I've got on an other subject to matter, which is our ancient site, the warrior's tomb, or whatever you want to call it, Liberty Hill, and the evidence that I've got on the other petition, because since I haven't been driving, since they took my driving license off me, I've been stuck in the local area. But I ended up being in a position to get interested in our area and look around our area, because I've always been interested in ancient sites and stone circles and things like that, um, because, you know, that's what I've been interested in, things like that. And this is when I started looking into the history of, and I I, I realised, I, I, you always kind of notice that Warriors Mound place, but you don't usually look at aerial photographs. And if you don't know about the other hill forts around the country, like Old Oswa Street, I used to go past Old Oswa Street every week, so I know a lot about it, and I've been there a lot of times. And I, I, I've seen a lot of hill forts, right, and, and things. Now, when I find out about this imperial chemical industry and the whole history of Castle Hill and Ramsden and then this Sam Copley going to Australia and getting the money and buying the whole of Huddersfield and then just handing it over to King George and then he goes and puts the imperial chemical industries factory at Dalton and then builds a tram station out to, to the, the site, the ancient site, and then calls it Waterloo as, as if after an ancient conflict... You know, um, then, and then that letter D gets built on there in 1954. A war breaks out when Varley starts excavating. And then, you know, it, what's happening are buildings and certain ancient sites are getting spoiled and built on, right? And it's in connection with party affiliation between liberals and Tories and to do with the fact that we were affiliated with the opposition, the Roundheads, when there was a civil war on and things like that and probably even further back. But there's something not right happening. Even John Speed and Jeffries and Alex Oggs have got discrepancies on their maps when it comes to our ancient sites. They've got issues with our area. They're putting discrepancies on the map specifically about the ancient site, right? And then when Chaz Obkirk writes his book about it and mentions it, exactly when Chaz Obkirk is mentioning and talking about our ancient sites in his book that gets published and sent out everywhere, and everyone's, oh, what's this all about? Then we've got the Statue of Liberty pops up in America, on an island, Liberty Island, that is the exact size and shape of our mound, which is representative of the Libby's, because I was a Liberty Cap area, that's what grows here, because I've done all the biodiversity, right? And then, you know, th th there's more. 
You know, I, I'm watching the Neil Oliver channel at the moment, and he, he's showing us now things like, um, you know, that Alfred Jewell, which is Libet Shape and things like that. So, now, it, it's clearly evident with Huddersfield, right, that it's it's got a history, a very important rich history and past. Yet, all of the liberal pubs now have nearly vanished from the centre of Huddersfield, the original pubs, because walking around Huddersfield, if you were walking around Huddersfield in the 1600s or 1700s, would have been somewhat like Stratford-on-Avon or Tewkesbury or Winchcombe or, you know, even Plymouth before it was bombed. It, it would have been a historical place that you walked around um, a very vintage and classical place with an identity and roots, right? It's got wisdom teeth. Yet, by process and procedure, these key liberal stronghold buildings have been pulled out. Like teeth being pulled out by dentists, drilled out. And it's been slowly replaced. And over the years, including that, event with the Imperial Chemical Industries factory, right? We've got a lot of money seems to flow into this field from the government. They're very keen to want to give up, give the gold over. The treasure, yeah, have some money, have some sweets. Oh, would you like to do this field up, right? Where other places didn't. You know? They could have done that to Tewkesbury. Oh, here, have would have some money. Wouldn't you like to do Tewkesbury up? Why don't you pull that building down? Why don't you pull that one down? Build a new B&Q. They, they didn't. Our council seems to have been bribed with vast amounts of money. Starting from, but not limited, to Sam Copley. Here's £3 million. Right? Or whatever it is, by the entire Otis field. But yet, it ends up with Earl Dartsmouth, half of it. Now he's trying to build houses on it. There is there's a strange and odd incentive being pushed on Otis field, pushing the money on us. Oh, it's going to be great. Here, have some money. Make it great, make it great, make it great. When it was great, it didn't need any money. Why didn't the Romans build York at Uddersfield and fill the place in with houses then, concrete it over? They didn't do it here. They set up at Lincoln and Chester and York. Right? Because the river was wider and bigger and the Romans wanted a big river there. They didn't set up at Huddersfield even though we've got a river, a smaller river, even though it was a lot more um, biodiverse back through prehistory and you don't need a massive, huge river anyway. Um, you know, there's plenty of water around this area. They didn't come and spoil it even though Castle Hill got fortified and built on um, in the Norman Conquest it, 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 it didn't really go too much further until the Chas Hobkirk book gets published and then we get the whole Victoria Tower and the reservoir at um, Meltham Chap and um, then we get Waterloo gets dumped on us, and then they start building out, heading straight for the Liberty Hill. I'm, I'll drive a call it Liberty Hill, actually, now, because, you know, that's what shape it is. Um, and then Liberty Island pops up with a statue in America, you know. So there is a, already now a history of Uddersfield getting spoiled. Now, you might say, well, it's not getting spoiled. It's not getting spo spoiled. It's not getting spoiled. The word spoiled is 
actually been ruined or something that you've already got getting marred or altered or damaged, right? Now, if you if you've got something and you don't like it or you're not keen on it, then you might give it away or get rid of it and get something better or different or bigger. But if you've got something and you actually like it and you think it's special, then you want to keep it, right? Now, what's up at Huddersfield is the what's been sold and pushed on Huddersfield is that um, you know they 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 obviously didn't like it and weren't happy with it, or they were told so, and they've been instead given a very very large chest of money and said, "Here, um, you know, forget about what you've got there, forget about it, forget about those, you know, forget about this wormwood doll in Armbury." Forget about these old buildings. They're there yesterday's news. Here, have this big chest of gold. Let's build something great. We could really make something great here, right? And knock those things down, right? That's what's actually happened. Yet, yeah. we, we did have something amazing. Now, it's actually called spoiling it and ruining it. Now, this is actually what happened to me when I was doing this campaign. And I've been around in, in Murfield for a long time and there's never been that many buildings get ruined um, at such a high rate. I've seen and no buildings. Obviously, buildings are going to get um, knocked down. But, for example, there's Darren Smith Builders. He couldn't wait to demolish Murfield, Darren Smith Builders. He has been making a career and lifetime out of demolishing buildings in Murfield and building, getting awards for putting new ones up, right? It's his lifetime ambition and career because he makes a hell of a lot of money out of it. A lot of, lot of money. There's no value in Murfield being um, like Winchcombe Village in um, Gloucestershire to Darren Smith because it, he doesn't like it. Don't like it. He doesn't love it. He doesn't care about it. It's he, he can't get anything out of it. When he walks past it and looks at it, it's not, he's not getting all out of it. He don't like looking at it. And it's not making him any money. It ain't making Darren Smith any money. And he needs to fill his wallet up with money. He wants to be rich. He wants to have a massive, huge wallet of cash in his pocket, right? That's what he wants. And that's what he cares about. He doesn't care about Murfield. Because he's knocked half of it down to make himself a fortune, right? And want more, bigger, 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 more, 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 right? What they should have done is locked him up in the village stocks, which is opposite where he built the houses. And then he wouldn't have been able to demolish anything because he doesn't like it. He doesn't like a traditional village, right? Now, if he didn't like a traditional village, why didn't he move to Manchester City? Darren Smith Builders could have got in his truck and driven straight down the motorway to Manchester, bought himself an house, and he could have had a big party demolishing all of Manchester, right, and rebuilding it again. Or Darren Smith could have got in a car and he could have flown to Iceland built himself an house, and he could have painted the island red. He could have built to his heart's content, right? Because there's nothing there to knock down and destroy. But instead, he wanted to make money out of Murfield, and he wanted to knock it down to make money out of it. He wanted to demolish it 
for his own profit because he didn't really like it like John Collins. John Collins has got a huge factory in Murfield, a massive factory. He literally employs half of the town, right? And when you drive into Murfield, past the Three Nuns roundabout, there greets you an absolutely beautiful, well-kept enclosure of land with beautiful trees in it and an old wooden fence and a gate like some... Um, Literally like the, it's like on uh, the sword in the stone when you go into the village and there's like a, 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 a walled area with the stone in it and the sword in, right? When you drive into Mayfield past the three nuns that it's got the Robin Hood um, grave, but you can't see the Robin Hood grave because it's meant to be up on the Armitage estate. But instead, we've got this magical little enclosure and it's absolutely pristine. Well, it's not now because it's been destroyed by John Cons. Now, the only thing is, occasionally, extremely rarely, you might get gypsies parking on there, right? And John Cottons didn't like that, even though it wasn't his land, it was Yorkshire Water's land. And then he ended up, this is around the time when Prince Andrew's popping up, you know, and likely John Cottons is a Tory voter, was affiliated with the Conservative Party, right? And this is when, um, because... Now the Tories are trying to ban gypsies and stop them from stopping anywhere. It's part of the directory. It's part of the directive of the Tories, right? And that land was protected. Yet John Cottons have bought it and he's gone and knocked it down because he didn't like it. He didn't like it. He didn't care about it. He doesn't. He didn't care about what you saw when you drove into Murfield. He didn't care if anyone else liked it and he didn't care that it was protected and he didn't care that there are laws protecting land um, and that it, an, an area of protected land has to be defined by a boundary. Instead, he just lied and said, oh, there's a, a couple of the trees are protected, but not the rest of it. And he demolished it and knocked it down and tarmacked half of it, right? I think that John Cotton's is connected and affiliated with um, Prince Andrew through his contacts. And the council should have stepped in and the council should have pulled John Cotton on it and stopped him, but they didn't. Now, what's happening at the council headquarters on the computer when people are putting complaints in goes on to the other matters with the other planning notices and the other incidents, like um, another thing is that it popped into the reds or someone suggested it or... Somebody pulled some strings, so the last thing the summer wine tours ended up ripping out the steps outside Sid's Cafe in Home Firth and putting a disability access ramp up to go to Beatty's Cafe. Yet the whole of Home Firth, the whole design of Home Firth is very steep staircases all over the place, right? Now, to do disability access around Home Firth, if you wanted to put disability access in, you would literally have to rip all those out and there would be nothing left of it because what defines Home Firth and what gives it its identity, what makes Home Firth Home Firth is its extremely steep and narrow, twisty, windy roads and staircases. That's why you go there, to look at it. So the twisty little... Um, streets and steps. That's the point. If you rip them out, they're not there, and then it's not on Firth. That is why it's on Firth, because it's extremely unique, like some other places similar, like Haworth or Stroud and other places, right? Now, that was another place that I was going to often, at a later stage when we're getting closer to now, right? when we're starting to have more and more sites are getting demolished. And I just, I don't think they're completely random. I don't think they are, right? Because we've got a situation where I've been doing something that is nationally significant, but I haven't been seeking any attention for it. I don't want any attention for it. I've been doing it because things haven't been done right. Things have been done un lawfully by local councils all around England, not just Kirklees, by the police, by ministers in government. We've got evidence. 
but nothing's being done about it. And instead, what we're finding is things that we've got photos of on our phones are getting targeted. Now, who orchestrated and planned and set out the illegal road signage network? Who orchestrated and planned the building and planning, right? And even set up the regulations and checks. Who's got enough money to buy houses and buildings or use the influence through television suggestion, advertising, or even phone calls to influence people? Now, another thing that I didn't know, which I've later found out, is that at one point my boss was... Well, my boss has sold his business, but the person who who ended up buying his business, someone else was going to buy it, and he's from Lancashire, but his son was called Andrew. But there was a weird incident when my boss was on his computer doing emails or something or other when he had a joke pulled on him when the person who was going to buy it had led him on the whole time or well we actually know this person because you know i used to go there for work and and my, and my boss had known him a long time so he had a quite a strong relationship with him but what happened is um at the last minute um they let my boss down and then they sent uh, a mail pulling out or something and, and 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 it sounds like they were kind of um using some panache about it before they, you know, winding up, before letting down. And and I've only just found this out. It happens that it, it, it was, um, it's, it said Andrew, right? And he made a point out putting his name. Now, it seems to me that this is, this is, I think, to do with, why Why is Andrew popping up? Why is Prince Andrew popping his head up? He just pops up at university like a pop-up book. Then he pops up with this Kylie thing, right? Then he drives past me at the end of the road, right? He's popping up like a pop-up book. And then there's this incident where my boss is selling his business, right? And then um, he got messed around. And all these... And then also, when I was going on the internet in Facebook groups and, and, and I was trying to make friends... Well, not trying to. I had lots of friends. I have lots of friends. I was going in groups. There was this weird things happening. Like a guy gave me something, a present for free. And I was really, really chuffed about it because it's not that often when I get given completely free presents and it, I really liked it. And then someone crashed into him in London, smashed into the side of him, right? He's not making it up. And that was a real letdown and disappointment. Right, and then what happened is people seemed apprehensive um, about helping me out, particularly in my campaign. So it was like people knew I were doing the campaign, but after that, um, people were maybe um, scared of helping me out, right? Or um, you know, apprehensive. It's a bit like the mafia when you know. If you mess with the mafia, then, you know, they don't just go after you. They go after your friends or family. Things were happening to people. And then the guy who did the artwork for the maps we did for the for the Castle Hill petition recently that we were in the art week, a guy even over in, um, he, he's from the Far East, he, he mysteriously, um, he got ill. He, something happened to his, his, his jaw and he got an infection and then his relative died when he'd done the work for us. It's almost as if you think that, oh, it's you that's jinxed. But I don't think it is. I think someone else is doing it um, to punish people for helping you. So no one, then that guy didn't want to help me anymore or do any more join for me, right? It's almost like, have you heard there's, there's books, there's how to make friends and influence people and there's a book how to lose friends and alienate people. Now, if you're doing something and then if if all these events or bad things are happening to the people that were helping you, then people aren't going to want to be your friend anymore or aren't going to want to help you. You end up with 
No offence, right? Because you're pursuing this directive. Now, if someone don't like it, like Prince Andrew or the royal family, because you happen to be investigating illegal road signage which incriminates them for planning corruption, then you're up against a very serious and dangerous force because they've got a hell of a lot of buttons, a hell of a lot of authority, and they've got soldiers marching around drill yards who put their hand up and down and salute them and do what they say, right? But yet, we're acting under a special right that is supposed to protect you from f f from that. I am protected because I am investigating something under petition to the government that I found to be do have been done wrong. I am protected. And actually, people who help me are supposed to be protected as well because it's in connection with that. Now, we've got to the stage now where... At that point, through the most of this, we didn't have Extinction Rebellion kicking off. Now, when I got prosecuted for putting the stickers out, which now the police aren't even prosecuting people for painting everywhere, painting, they're even giving people a caution for painting post boxes and letter boxes and electric boxes, right? And Extinction Rebellion suddenly, I had newspaper adverts out in the London newspapers, right? Then. Extinction Rebellion suddenly explode and go to the streets and get loads of money poured into them, as well as then at a later stage that insulate Britain. But Banksy got, got when I got prosecuted for the stickers, then literally more or less straight after, they went and got Banksy. They went and prosecuted Banksy for, for doing street art. And then he joined up with Extinction Rebellion, right? So that's what happened with that. You know, then now we've got more and more groups kicking off. This was sort of before COVID. And then the entire country gets locked down with COVID, um, this mass virus, after we've got all these other groups starting kicking off, protests all through Europe, all over America. And then we've got Anonymous as well started to investigate the police for things in America that the police were doing wrong, like, you know, beating up um, foreign, foreign people, that black guy who got killed, and then all that. And now we've got to a stage where there are a lot of activist groups who have been investigating a lot of things, not just corruption, but, you know, the environment and, and, and all manner of things. But some of them, not only me, a lot of them have got evidence and been collecting evidence as well and we've had three prime ministers step down now david cameron at the start and camera on cameron you know he stepped down when the illegal road signage case you know was 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 going off um and then we had Theresa may fill in and then she went and then now we've had boris johnson the replacement and now he's finally stepped down and all the time through it, they've been evading, evading, evading liability. And they don't want to, because they think they're above the law. They can't be prosecuted. Well, MPs apparently can be prosecuted, but not, not the House of Lords. Yet someone has orchestrated illegal planning corruption all through highways and all through building control as well. And it's connected because the major large contracts with government are from the same companies and circles of people because there's not much of a fine line between a guy with a digger doing a road and a guy with a digger building a house. And it turns out that these companies are all on government contract and they get awards and they literally are the local councils and they're controlling local councils and they're all part of this black rock vanguard network of people construction and it was construction was the only sector which seemed to be immune from covid and the prime minister would not lock down everyone else was locked down unless you were a construction, highways worker, or building houses, and you are free to carry on. 
and this is the what they wanted to do. They wanted to carry on with the projects and building of houses. And this is when all these places are getting knocked down and bulldozed and uh, we can't we'll be able to do anything about it. And Boris is what we're wanting to try and get rid of our even right to object at all. If he would have done that, we'd have been like in Ireland where they, there's, they automatically get permission to build things and you even have to pay. You are fined. You are charged when you make uh, an observation. When you even look at what they're doing and have something to say about it, you are instantly fined on the spot. 20 euros. You're fined 20 euros for sticking your nose into their business, for making an observation of what's going on here, right? For asking what's going on and having an opinion on it, you are instantly fined and charged 20 euros. And that is where they were wanting to take it. If you stick your nose in their business and have a look, you know, and have, a, have something to say to them, don't speak to me unless you're spoken to. Don't speak to me unless you've got 20 euros. It's a 20 euro fine and charge for speaking to me. That is how they want to do it in Ireland, right? And that that is, you know, where they, they've been, where they were wanting to take it over here. And they were going to, you know, try and get rid of all the um, footpaths on the private land as well and all that. Now, this is an, another thing as well is, you know, when you're looking at in Ireland with all the um, massive building projects they're doing and, um, you know, these massive 400 um apartment blocks that can't be stopped, almost like the bomb going off. It's like the Andale, it's almost like the opposite of the Andale Centre. In, in in Manchester, the Andale Centre blew up. So it's almost like the irony is that if you can explode a housing project to 400 home size and nothing can stop it, it's almost like the bomb going off. It's almost like boom, 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 boom. It's almost like the perfect reconciliation or irony for the Andale Centre bombing. Now, we're bombing Ireland with apartment blocks, you know, um, and they're unstoppable, you know, and they're trying to actually protect the ancient sites. In fact, in Ireland, they're even building replicas of ancient sites in shopping centres in order to try and persuade the Irish that they, you know, you can have a tomb of an ancestor in a shopping centre. You know, ancestors aren't there to be good, paid respect to in peace and quiet. They are some sort of um, novelty to have around your shopping environment. You know, it, 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 in effect... Rather than having, you know, the knights and earls in a cathedral, you know, the sarcophagus of, you know, knights of England inside York Minster or Canterbury, you know, when it's very peaceful and quiet, or if if there's a choir singing, it's not choirs don't sing all the time. Um, it's almost like, you know, have the knight buried, you know, would you have, and I don't, I'm not talking about a statue. I'm not talking about, you know, like a statue of Paul McCartney at Liverpool Airport. I'm talking about the actual, you know, he's actually buried there, you know. Would you have Paul McCartney buried in, um, you know, a shopping centre? You know, when people are going shopping around and I'm sitting on it and eating a McDonald's, you know. Uh, would you have the Queen? Maybe, you see, this is the thing. Does the Queen want to be buried inside Harrods? You know, this is the thing. Should we bury the Queen inside Harrods and have a sarcophagus inside Harrods? You know, so people can go and sit on it while their partner's trying hats on. You know, she wouldn't want to do it, would she? The Queen wouldn't want uh, um, to be buried inside Harrods um, with a statue laid out, um, you know, because she would be insulted. So why are they building Irish ancient um, dolmens of the ancestors inside shopping centres in Ireland um, in order to try and make them think that it's okay to do that? Um, so then when they're trying to build these 
unstoppable housing developments um, next to ancient sites, then it's no big deal. That, that That's the thinking behind it, right? And this is... Who, who owns these companies? It's Andrew. Now, another thing is the Fergie thing with Andrew. Now, the thing with the Fergie thing with Andrew is this, and this happened quite a while ago. This was in the news quite many years ago. It was a story where, apparently, Sarah Ferguson was offering um, opening doors for people who wanted business with Prince Andrew. And, um, you know, she got done by the press. She got done by the media. But why would anyone want to do business with Prince Andrew anyway and open doors? Now, if he's involved with the BlackRock Vanguard group and this Aladdin group who own computer systems for governments, particularly in the White House, right, then maybe that they might start sniffing around his business contacts. And if BlackRock and Vanguard is essentially the aristocracy and they can pull strings and make things happen, open doors, so to say, through contractors, through council affiliations, through house building, they can pull strings to get houses built and pull strings to get houses knocked down. They can pull strings to get illegal road signage planning up and they can pull strings to for speed cameras to go off when Alan Sugar drives past on a Thursday at half past two or when the football manager is trying to get to a football match. They can pull strings for the traffic lights to be on red and then they get held up and delayed Then they have to drive the hard shoulder. Alex Ferguson, when he needs to go for a wee and, you know, um, he's late for the football match. Um, and, it, you know, they, they might think it's funny. Or it's not as funny as putting a letter D dunce on your ancient site, you know? This is this is it. When you are talking about people who have got very extensive, serious networking through multiple brands and organisations, including contracts for governments and councils, you are talking about people who can open and close doors. Key workers... People might be interested in business deals with them through Sarah Ferguson. Or maybe that story was a deterrent for people who might want to sniff around Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, who might want to find out who is opening and closing the doors and what their network affiliation is. Find out who really is at the top of Black Rock Vanguard group, you know, whenever it was conjured up because I'd never heard of it back then. You know, this is it. Then after the Sarah Ferguson story, they might be a bit scared or apprehensive of pursuing that line of inquiry in business because they might end up in the newspaper as well. So, you know, looking back, if there, well, there is such a network of people, then surely that story is quite relevant, you know? Now, this is it. Now, the stage we're at now is that we've got the Earl Dartsmouth. He's got land that was meant to be part of the Ramsden estate, likely, and some Copley deal. But it, it's not Kirkley's Council got it. It's the Earl Dartsmouth, right? And he's wanting to build houses. And then we're getting more and more buildings now are mysteriously getting changed without planning notices being there. No planning notices in Armenbury. None for the co-op. None for the co-op group. And then the council had a, a very strategic development department which is doing these moves it's almost like the ATAT walking in Star Wars and the Scout Walker one step at a time. But it's almost like, you know, you, you, you can't see it coming. It's almost like it, the it's almost like it's covered in mist and there's an ATAT walking and, and you don't know what it is and then this big foot comes down, boom. And then, well, they just bought the co-op and changing it to the Rose and Crown, the Rose and Crown. 
and then the next foot comes down, boom, through the mist, and then bam, they're, they're doing King James School up, and now they've changed all the pavements and put all these speed things out. Oh, we're bringing all the kids into the village now, in the vintage village, and then boom, the other foot of the attack comes down, bam, all Dartsmouth's doing HS2 and HS3, oh, didn't you know about it? Didn't you know about it? And then boom, the next thing, this is it. It's like the Imperial um, Scout Walkers. Um, Attacks coming through. It, it's it's like who's at the controllers of the Kirkley's Council strategic planning. We will Dartsmouth. It's like like one of these um, Imperial Star Destroyers. In fact, the guy on that film in Star Wars looked like Prince Philip, the guy who was in charge of that Imperial um, Star Destroyer with, with Darth Vader. The, the, George Lucas got the guy. He looked like Prince Philip. That guy, if you watch the film, you know, he looks like Prince Philip. This is it. It's We can't stop them. And even when you're looking out for it now, you're looking for planning oasis. Then you drive past somewhere, boom, they've done it. It's been built. It's been built over or demolished. Well, where was the planning notice? There was none. I, I wasn't given notice. Or, or a notice appears. Oh, there's a notice there. Oh, I have to see what's going on over there. Oh, it's expired. Well, it wasn't there last week. How, how can I possibly have objected to that? This notice has just appeared now. I've been catching the bus here, like, you know, every day or every other day. There's been no notice on there. I've been walking past it and it's just appeared. Poof. Oh, time's elapsed. Sorry, too bad for that. Ha ha. You know, and then you go to the council website to get the contact details and there are none. Oh, it's a place um, in, in Wales somewhere. Well, what's the postcode? What's the address? Oh, there is none. It's just the name. It's impossible to contact him or I'll complain to the council. You know, yeah, well, you know, I open a complaint and Katie Chu closes it down. Well, how can you have possibly investigated it, Katie? I opened the complaint yesterday morning and now you've closed the complaint down within like five hours. How can you have made any investigations into the sign or check the CCTV to see if it was there? It's impossible, Katie. You can't possibly have investigated it. You haven't investigated it. It's, it's almost, you know, is it, it, Prince Andrew hacking into the computer system and closing the complaint down? You know, is he trying to outdo us with panache, with, with you know, with, with these celebrity dates or whatever? You know, it, it, when, if you're just, you know, a person who minds their own business and, you know, goes, you know, to the cinema every other day or, you know, potters around at the park, then it's not going to mean much significance. If you are engaged in a serious investigation with evidence against the government and it is, they're not going to be happy about it because they don't want legal action against them, then people are going to be antagonised or roughed up in high places. And it could be that there is a history of them using their influence um, to rubbish and spoil a lot of places. And the reasons could be because of past conflicts. Waterloo. It's a battle. The Civil War it was a war. Liberals versus the Tories, Cavaliers and Roundheads. It was a battle. It was a conflict. Our area took a side. There was a conflict. Now, we still seem to have a conflict. We've had a virus dropped on us. The whole world, covid We've got issues over building and planning, trying to take the rights away. We've got issues of whether we've got rights or not and what they are. We have got a conflict. We have got issues. And we seem to have a war on because someone has been attacking our buildings and area. And not only that, they've actually been bribing 
the well, it's it's Her Majesty's Council anyway, because the council is owned by Her Majesty, and the councillors are well elected by us. But you know, this is it. What is happening with the computer system with the council? We've got a surgery that has mysteriously appeared built up recently, but yet on records, it's saying two years ago and on Google. Yet I've seen it in its original state within that time. So how has it happened? Unless the computer system has been hacked and changed. Now, who has an affiliation with government computer systems? Do you know the name of a government computer system? Oh, there's one called Aladdin. Oh, it's the one that the American government use. And is that any connection to Black Rat Vanguard Group? Oh, yes, by any yes, it is. Oh, what coincidence. My people who have access to and control of uh, Aladdin government computer system be able to hack into the local council planning records and create planning applications from nowhere that are pre prescribed, backdated to two years ago or even six months ago and even possibly put them opposite Sid's Cafe um, in Unferth after the time that they issued on it has already expired. Just to beat you because... They're having a bit of a compo competition with you and they might even be doing it to beat because they want to win. Because you're trying to beat them with the illegal road signage they put out. So they're trying to beat you back by getting rid of all the buildings that you like. So then there's none left. And then you've got nothing. Compo. If you win, then you still got nothing because even if you did prove that all the road signage was illegal and got legal action, then you lost because they've destroyed all your buildings. So your score is nothing. It's like in tennis, you know, 15 love. It's like, oh, I, I won the prosecution. It's like, I won the battle, but all my castles have been destroyed. You know, it's like I won the war, but, you know, all the civilians in my country are dead. You know, it's like that situation. It's like, even if you win, you've lost. And all the time you... It's like when I was playing pool with my friend one time, we went to play pool in it actually at the place next to the casino. And I was putting all the balls and I didn't realise he was walking around behind me, picking them back up out of the holes and putting them back on the table. So I potted literally all the balls and then it, 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 I hadn't because I hadn't potted any. It, it's sort of like that, but the opposite. So you're going around trying to get to a position in life where you, uh, you know, you, you go to a nice village that you like, you move there, and then you start a business, but not an uh, excessively massive one, and you make some friends, and then you've got a life and you go places. You, you're, you're weaving a reality, but yet someone's behind you unweaving it. They're pulling the houses down, and then making your friends not your friends anymore, and then they're, you know, um, ruining your business. That's literally what, what's been done. You're weaving life, and they're behind you, walking behind you, unweaving it, unravelling it. This is, I think, what Andrew specialises in and is an expert at. And I think that he's got some sort of back cave somewhere. I can't prove it, but it's something like that. And we don't know exactly what the arrangement is. But look at William. There was that incident with William and the helicopter where apparently a drone... William was in the news all the time. He was swanning around in his helicopter, landing at the palace, taking off, flying around in his helicopter. He's got a new helicopter. And that was when he was working at Anglesey, supposedly being a lifeguard. But then he gets uh, a drone, narrowly misses helicopter or something, and then he decides helicopters aren't for him anymore, and then he joins the Secret Service instead, right? Funnily enough, Anglesey is where that Isaac Nash went missing, who's from around here, um, and, and he vanished. Yet he'd won three school marathons and broke all records. He was like, he was going to be a 
champ he, he was going to be like the next Olympic medalist of the world for running and he just mysteriously vanished in Anglesey just around the area where William was meant to be flying around his helicopter saving people in that mysterious wonder where he went to right and then the next thing they're building a memorial park for it over here but funnily enough his name is Isaac now there was another kid called Isaac who died who but was from home Firth right he went to home Firth and it was called Isaac and he died and then there was another mysterious event where when I was hanging around with someone um called Reuben there were actually two Rubens and then another a lady's son something happened to him who was called Reuben and they built a memorial or something so th there's been some strange things happening but the way the way it happens it, it, it oh, it's somebody's trying to make out that, that you're the jinx there's something wrong with you but I don't think that is the case because why is it we get these panache moves why do we get Pinash popping his head up at the university and then popping his head up with Kylie. It, it, you have to know certain things. And if you are someone who has been engaged in something important and serious that they might have an interest in wanting to listen to you or spy on you or whatever it is, the, the metadata or on your mobile phone or on the end of your telephone or whatever it is, and if you are pursuing something that they're not happy with and don't like, then the things they start panashing around and popping their heads up. And I think that's not just to do with me recently. I think this affects other people and other people should come forward. I think it's happened to many other people. And it, it clearly that is what's been happening through the history books with our ancient sites, with the Edgewood Avenue getting built on there and with the Imperial Chemical Industries. And a lot of the time, there are people who are trying to defend the sites and defend areas, and there are people who take sides with the opposition and accept the greed and the money and sell out because they don't actually care about the area and they're not really bothered about it or history. They want to accept the big chest of gold and sell out and pull everything down and and rebuild it because it's not we're not good enough for them, and that's like what what happened in Murfield. Many, many builders sold out. Building should be in areas where houses don't exist already. In areas where houses exist, you only need repairmen. You only need housing repair work. In areas where houses don't exist or where no one objects to houses being built fairly, there are plenty of places where no one will object. But it seems to be that areas have been targeted where there are things that people are wanting to protect, but yet, mysteriously, the planning notices aren't appearing. Or, you know, people, you know, it, it mysteriously appears. And we don't know how it got there or how it changed. You know, there are some strange things happening. Now, if strange things don't exist, then what was going on with the Tandy development at Castle Hill? Because that is evidence that we're not making this up. It's evidence that it's not fabricated. It's evidence that a party plans to deceive and build something that they have not got permission for. And again, it's to do with Castle Hill. And I think the Tandy Partnership were played and manipulated, scapegoated and led into it by the powers that be through whichever procedure is used. There are many procedures they can use. Letters, messages, internet, Facebook, you know, this is it. There's an art 
You get professional golfers. You get professional footballers. You get professional soldiers. You get professional artists. There aren't many in this very odd profession but that we're not supposed to know exists. And I think it is called political meddling, spying and espionage. And I think that it's perfectly it's perfectly exemplified in like some of the classic movies. The classics. It's like with odd job. It's his name, it's a very odd job, but someone's got to do it. He's the henchman. There's a guy, um, you know, he's a professional, a professional man, Scaramanga. He's got an island and he's got a helper. He's got a henchman. He does jobs for people. You know, there's a job to do, you know, and it's it is a very professional, but it's an odd job. It's not the job that most people have or they can recruit or use people as they seem fit see fit but the person who's been recruited doesn't too much you know they don't need to know more information than they need to know all you need to know is you're to be stood on the street corner um you know there's a man in Huddersfield opposite the you know train station stood there dressed as a woman in purple costume and he doesn't need to be any know anything more than that if anyone asks you what you're there for you tell them this you know um or you know oh we're hiring you, we're doing some auditions for the BBC, could you please say these phrases? We're looking for a female vocalist who can repeat these phrases that I need to be repeated. Are you a good impersonator? You know, can he's a sample of a voice, you don't need to know any more information than that, I'm just the BBC. I don't work for any other organisation in the government or military. You're just Mary Poppins and you've popped in to do an audition for the BBC. Here's a script. Read these out. We'll record you. We'll speak to you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Now roll the tape. Right? You don't need to know... Oh, we've got a replica of Hitler's um, headquarters here. Look, there's a, there's a replica of Hitler's headquarters. What are you going to be doing with that? It's, they've got a replica of Hitler's headquarters. Every single thing that they used to have in his room in every single position. The cabinet's in the right place. The photograph's in the right place. And we've got his room mic'd up. Now we know everything that he's saying and potentially everything that he could be looking at in the room or anything that anyone is hinting at. We've literally got a working model and visualisation of his room and anything that could be seen, said, or even cue anything else in the room. This is high-end psychological um, military um, operations, you know, and the rest of it. And we also happen to be on the ball with every single bit of um, progress that the university is um, currently making uh, at, the, at this time, you know? you know? And by the way, Elon Musk's got a tunneled ca cave in case there's World War Three bricks, bricks out um, underneath the ground, you know? So, you know, if that's where Elon Musk's back cave is, then where's the Queen and Prince Andrew's back cave, you know? It ain't under Manchester City because everyone knows where that back cave is. It's already been spotted and people have been exploring it. You know, this is it. We need to, you know, we need to know what these people are. They're prof they've got a professional skill in a very odd job that normal people don't have, which is events and incidents, intervention, engagement, Engage, number one. Engage. Make the contact. Engage the contact. Send the message. Intervene. Expertly intervened. Expertly executed without detection. Expertly slipped in without detection. Right? This is the British Imperial regime of the highest evolutionary pinnacle of human existence with the knowledge of the British Empire and they like to use pinache with style. They have odd jobs to do which happen to be um, defeating their opposition and they have a lot of opposition within their own country, within their own parties even. So, you know, it's there are people to remove. 
There are processes to intervene in. There are procedures to halt. There are persons to hinder, you know, or else they will not be ruling anymore. Other people might be ruling and they might not be. Don't like this, don't like that. This is, this is what we're dealing with. This is where we're at with it. If, whether you want to call it the dream team, Manchester United or whatever. But frankly, when there are laws in place, when there are regulations to follow and they're not being followed, like with the illegal road signage network, things aren't being done right. Where is the referee to blow the whistle? We don't seem to have one. This is the problem. And buildings are suffering. And they're getting named with a certain pinache, like Waterloo. These people have a fondness for art because it entertains them. It gives them pleasure. Tate Modern, one of the most famous art galleries in the world. Let's walk in there. What's there? A toilet with a small piece of graffiti on the side of it. Mmm, just relish it. It's got a value to these people. They enjoy it. It means something. It is a loo, a water loo to take a pee-pee in. The meaning of it gives them pleasure and has a great value, maybe in excess of millions of pounds. They like things to have irony and meaning, which is why we have the Duns shape hill on the ancient site. But yet, seemingly, you know, when it gets recognised, the a near identical size and shape island in America pops up with a Statue of Liberty on it. And that's Liberty Island. We don't have the Liberty Island here. Liberty Island is in America. This is the problem. There's something not right. We need to find out what is wrong with these people and who their odd jobs are and what their odd job network is. Is it the Navy commander? Is it the diplomat? Is it the ordinary citizen who is unknowingly recruited, um, such as the Tandy brothers, unbeknownst to them? and influenced into the scapegoat position, this is it, you know? Is it the local councillor, the new groomed recruit with the name for the game, Tyler Hawkins, swoops in like a hawk? This is it, being groomed through labour school and a trained engineer, and now part of the cooperative group. This is it. Who are the team players? Do they know they're on the team? This is the problem. But it's this, this pinache. And now someone knows what's going on because they, Prince Andrew has been nailed by the Americans for paedophilia or whatever it is, you know, for sex offences. So one minute he's panashing around with um, Kylie Minogue and popping up at Huddersfield University Um in a panache style manner, then the next minute he's been um, prosecuted by Americans and Prince William is having drones flown at his helicopter and then he's saying, oh, maybe I'm not keen on helicopters anymore. Um, I'll pack that in and instead I'll join MI5 and MI6. Now, is it MI5 and MI6 who are in the Batcave? Or does Andrew have his own separate back cave that MI5 don't know about. This is what we need to know. But it's classified information. We need we need to know what is going on. That this is the problem because buildings are getting destroyed and a lot of money's at stake for them, not for us, because we don't have any money. They've got all the money. You know? This is then we've got the other scapegoats, more important figures than the Tandy Brothers. The Tandy Brothers are small-time scapegoats. When we've got Elon Musk, big-time scapegoats. Mark Zuckerberg. Then they move the chess piece of Nick Clegg, 
a new knight chess piece gets moved over. Now he's the global president of the world, just as Biden is going senile and demented. He's not fit to be president. Yet up pops a suggestion for a global president of the entire world under the Facebook meta regime, the new metaverse. We're ruled by Nick Clegg and with his handshakes with his Mark Zuckerberg. You know, this is the problem. This is the issue we've got. Someone is orchestrating this whole thing. And this is now why we've got Anonymous. Can we trust Anonymous? Are Anonymous really freedom fighters who are trying to keep their identity secret? Or are they just a front for more odd job regime operatives to do more foul play against us? You know, we don't know. But one thing I know for certain is there are planning violations in our area happening mysteriously and we are at war because we want to get these people for crimes war crimes planning corruption crimes and they bloody well will take us down um, if they can and they won't just take us down they'll take everything down that we like and love um, and we'll have no friends left at the end of it, you know? So th th this is, it, it, it's, it's, it's a big claim, it's a big World Series claim, but so is the Americans' claim. Does it exist? Yes, they prosecuted Prince Andrew, or they fined Prince Andrew for fiddling with young adults' sexual crimes. Does it exist? Yes. You know, did Prince William's helicopter get narrowly missed by a drone? Yes. So there's something, there's something going on here and it's to do with power and control and the network of the businesses and unfortunately a lot of the influence on the general population who might want to help us or even know what's going on their attention is being distracted by game shows, Philip Schofield, the radio with, you know, stupid chocolate bar adverts because these people can put their slogans and their pinache puns. It doesn't... It, it's not limited to Kylie stunts. It's the ice cream advert pun, the next slogan, the next McDonald's whistle. That's another thing. When I wrote some music around the time when it all started, I got one of my tunes, well, not exactly Fleece, but they copied it and did a tune that was a little bit like it and put it on the McDonald's whistle tune. And so everyone was actually whistling it. And in a way, it was copied because, um, you know, they, 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 they fleeced the idea from it from me you know, and used it for their gain and profit, you know, to no benefit of me whatsoever. Because if I had uh, made some money out of the idea, then I could have probably used that for campaign money, you know. It, it's, they, they like to, these people, right, if you are, if, you, if you've got something that they can make use of for themselves, they'll help you. And if you've got something that, they can use for themselves and you don't want to help them or you're not on their side, then they'll just listen in and steal it from you anyway. or copy you. That's how they roll, these people. The, the, the thieves as well, you know? It's d despicable. Literally, pure, pure despicability. And that's, that's, that's what I think. I might not be right, but to me, with new evidence from other channels and other campaigns who are legitimately doing work and are, who are on the internet now, you can go on Anonymous Official Channel, you can go on to Sorrel Amar Finance, you can go on uh, Russell Brand, you can go on to Neil Oliver, you can go on to uh, these websites and people are starting to ask the same questions I am. They're starting to be interested in these things and they also think that this is how COVID happened these people are behind dropping the viruses on us all as punishment 
and to control us and lock us down. It, it all ties in. And it's really the same model, similar to what David Icke, but people don't like David Icke because they're scared of what he's saying or they don't really understand what David Icke's saying. I don't agree with everything that David Icke says, but it's, it, it all fits the same model. And that model is that we've got some serious odd jobs and it's the, the royal odd jobs. It has to be. There's no other explanation for it. Because they, they, they've they got the panache and flair where they like to show off about it with these Kylie stunts and with the speed camera flash. Oh, it's Charles. Charles. Oh, it's Camilla. Camilla. Camera. And ne let the next guy step forward on the pedestal. Oh, it's Cameron. Camilla. Cameron. And now we have, oh, some white lines on the road. Who is Charles? Oh, are they your cocaine lines, Charles? No, no, they're just road lines. Ha, ha, ha. But it's a good pun, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. That's why we have Camilla as well. Who take a picture. You know, it's like, oh, that's my little pun. That's my panache. That's how we like to roll it. Have you got the... Do you like the style? Have you have you noticed our style yet? That's my panache. I'm Charles, and he's Camilla, and he's David Cameron. Do you get it yet? This is my style. This is how I like to roll it. And here's Andrew. What have you got for his Andrew? Oh, he's my Kylie chick. He's my Kylie chick stunt. And my business contacts and my odd jobs, you know. This is their panache. And and frankly, oh, there's a oh, there's a little letter D on the top of Ariel Fort. It looks like a dunce sign. Where did that come from? You know, this is, this, 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 I've, you need to, you know, this is the, the style, the panache. It's the artist, the artist known as prince or king or queen. You know, it's, it's the, the, the artist. Do you, do you recognise the artist? Oh, yes, I recognise the artist. There's Charles and Camilla. Look, I can see their speed cameras in their work road, white lines down the road. Yes, I, I, I noticed the artist straight away. Yes, don't need to see the signature. That's one of um, that's one of Andrews, all right. It's a Kylie stunt, you know. This is it. It's it's ridiculous. We need someone anonymous or someone to find out where the Prince Andrew Batcave is with the computer that links straight into the local council's computers. The the Aladdin, the Aladdin's cave, the White House Aladdin computer system that controls local council computers and planning records and God knows what else, you know? This is what we need to know. But it's, it's all at the top of Black Rock Vanguard and all it's heavily protected. So, you know, if you want to carry on voting for these Conservatives, then you do that. Um, frankly, someone needs to get to the bottom of it or to the top of it and very quickly...